I recently I dyed some fabric for the first time. And although I've tie dyed before, I wasn't quite sure what the final product would look like. But I must say I'm quite pleased. Although I would have liked the colors to be a bit more vibrant. But I'll continue to experiment with different dyes and techniques to see what works best for me. But for now I just want to show you how I made this piece. So let's dye in. really nice. For this experiment, material requirements included an apron and some gloves, as well as a big towel which you don't feel sorry for, as fabric dyeing can become quite messy. You will also need a container, the deeper the better, and a rack on which you will pile your fabric and ice. You will later notice that I used the second rack to lift the fabric even higher, to ensure my fabric doesn't touch the drip of dye water being collected in the container. I decided to dye some calico, since this was my first time ice dyeing. I only weighed out 200 grams of dry fabric, although the dye package instructions indicated a 250 gram dry fabric maximum. I used Lady Dye Cold Water Reactive Dye in Dark Navy and Protea Red. Two sachets were included in the box, one being the dye powder and the other a fixative to ensure color fastness. Furthermore, you will also need some ice, warm water and some salt. According to the dye instructions, you will dye your fabric first and then use the fixative. But because I was going to be ice dyeing, I decided to prep my fabric by using the fixative first. I started by pouring 2.5 liters of warm water into my container and proceeded to add the fixative sachet. I used the skewer to dissolve the fixative ensuring a proper solution before adding my fabric to the mix. The calico had been pre-washed and dried prior to soaking in the fixative. I did this to pre-shrink my fabric before weighing out 200 grams, as well as to make sure that any sizing or other chemicals used during the spinning and weaving process had been removed, ensuring better dye absorption. Make sure to wet the entire fabric. I also used a rack and bowl filled with water to ensure the fabric stays completely submerged in the fixative solution. I left the fabric to soak for at least 30 minutes before removing it from the fixative solution. I only pressed out the excess liquid but did not rinse the fabric as not to remove the fixative. Set up your towel, container and rack. Bundle and arrange the prepared fabric on the rack. Use a dye that is suited to your fabric type. I used unbleached calico, which is 100% cotton and natural plant fiber. If you'd like to know more about different fibers, you can follow the link in the description below to a blog post I wrote on the topic. I covered my fabric with ice first and then sprinkled over the dye powder. But you can also do the inverse, where you first sprinkle over your dye and then cover it in ice. Since I will be sprinkling my dye onto the ice, the shape and size of the ice cubes will influence the dye pattern. Because of this, I did not use any big clumps, only individual cubes. My cubes were also not perfect blocks, but had center wells, which could accumulate and release the dye during the melting process. For this experiment, I used about two-thirds of a bag of ice. I also made sure to cover as much of the exposed surface area of the fabric as possible before sprinkling with the dye powder. Now here's where I need to make a bit of a confession. Unbeknown to me, the dye sachet right here is Protea Red, which I never intended to use in this experiment. Because if you've been following my channel, you will know that I'm a blue kind of girl. So next, you'll see me realize that this in fact is not the dark navy I thought it was. Then deciding, I guess it will be okay. But actually what went through my head in that split second was, no, this can't be happening. Now I will have like one random spot with purple or red. Guess I'll just have to add a pinch of red all over now. So I continued to sprinkle half a sachet or less of the Pratia red 
followed by the entire sachet of dark navy. To intensify the shade, I also sprinkled about 4 heap tablespoons worth of salt onto the ice. According to the package instructions, you can double this amount for a more intense colour, something that I would definitely do next time. I want to definitely recommend that you use a deeper container than I did, one into which your rack can fit into entirely, as the blocks kept shifting and falling all over during the melting process. And there was also a lot of spattering from the drips. I also kept on arranging the ice as it melted by putting back any blocks that may have fallen off or shifted away from the fabric. I rinsed the dyed fabric under running cold water until most of the excess dye had run out. I added some water to a bucket to further squeeze out as much as possible of the leftover dye. It's recommended to rinse the fabric under running water until the water runs clear. But I intended to also wash the fabric, so it felt unnecessary to waste any more water. The package instructions recommended a 40 degrees Celsius soapy wash to fix the colour. Initially I was only going to use a short 15 minute cycle, but because I did not rinse out all of the excess dye, I decided on a 30 minute wash cycle. After washing, the fabric was line dried in the sun, with the south easterly wind assisting to shorten the drying process. Lastly, I ironed the fabric on a setting suitable for cotton and clipped off all the frays before neatly folding. I'm not sure yet what I will make with this fabric, but I don't quite mind the bluish purple pink it turned out to be.